welcome back to my channel. Welcome, my name is Liz. If you're new here, you just stumble this video. My name is Liz. I talk about many things. I talk about uh, life living in a diaspora. I talk about, I have so many uh, videos about recipes, cooking recipes. I do hair tutorials. I do so much. I am so spontaneous. So you can check my videos out and you will see whatever you find that fits you. Go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment so that I know that you passed by and you like one of my videos. So today we have a guest again, Mr. Ernest Makulilo from Tanzania, who is also living in America like me. And you know, I get so many questions every day, every day in my inbox, on my Facebook, on my Instagram. <laughs> People ask me, how do I come to America? How can I get a visa? How can I be able to live in America? How can I be? So I decided why not make a video, a brief video of how, of so many other different ways you can apply for a green card, you can apply for a visa, different, different um, visas. And today I have um, Mr. Ernest Makulilo that is going to check us through. We shall share ideas of what I know, what he knows, so that somebody out there will benefit. So that when somebody comes in my inbox again, come to YouTube channel, I have some answers. So stay tuned, do not go anywhere, watch the video to the end. And you never know if you need the information, you have a neighbor, you have a sister that is asking you about the same. Let us learn together. So welcome, welcome, Mr. Makulido. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be back to your YouTube channel. Thank you. Uh, so I have a few questions today just because I get so many of these questions, so many questions every day. I don't know how many I get in my inbox, <laughs> but I would like to give some, <laughs> some sort of light. Mm? It is not that you're going to wake up one day and just come. You need there's a procedure that we follow. So these are the things we are going to talk about briefly. So could you give us some, how can someone in Uganda, in Kenya, in uh, Europe, wherever they are, how can they travel to America and uh, for how long and give us all those different visa types? Uh, first of all, thanks so much Liz for inviting me to your YouTube channel and be giving the opportunity to share just like a brief, if someone who is not in America, for instance, how can someone be able to come here? But most importantly is how can someone live here on a permanent basis, meaning can you have a green card uh, and the authorization to work and live here on the permanent basis and possible if they want to become citizen or not. So the first thing is to come to America. So there are different ways to come to America. Uh, but I will explain each way in a very brief way and how whether it is easy or difficult or what are the overall requirements you need to have in order to qualify for that particular way. Uh, myself, I came to America through education, through scholarship. So yes, number one is through education. So through education, uh, I usually tell uh, it is very difficult to come for bachelor's degree whether in America or going to Europe. Uh, and if you are going to look for scholarships, because most of these countries don't prefer to give scholarships for bachelor's degree, they give most for graduates, meaning for masters and PhD studies. So if you want to have more options and guarantee of coming through education, it is better to get bachelor degree with the good results in your own country and other steps will follow from there. So that's number one. But if you want to come for self-financing, to pay for your own education, I usually advise people it is very, very expensive to study here. You can average most of the school fees only, tuition is about 15,000. You can get, let's say, 10,000, but majority is 15,000 before you add the cost of living, housing, food, books. It goes to 25,000 to 30,000 per year. That is a lot of money for someone coming from Africa. I usually tell people if you want just to get education and is starting up and you want to pay for your own, it is better to go to Scandinavian countries like Norway, where there is no tuition and fees. It's free of charge. You just pay for the cost of living, which will not exceed 10,000, plus you'll be allowed to work. 
So you can go there to study your bachelor degree if you want to pay for your own or your masters. And if you want to specifically to come to America for scholarship, you can come from there. So that's number one through education. So you can come through a scholarships or to pay on your own, depending on your financial status. But it's very difficult for people to think that I can come here and work and go get the money to go to school because there are restrictions for international students. You have to work 20 hours per week and the minimum job is just about $10. You have to work 20 hours per week on campus. That is not a lot. It's about 1000 per month, but you have to eat. You have to pay for fees. You have to pay. It will be difficult. Yes, you can work under the table, but if you get caught, you'll be deported right away and banned to come to America for five to 10 years. So that is number one. And on my channel, I talk, I give all the details and there are free books, people, if they want to know about scholarships. Number two, uh, people uh, come through visiting. So there are procedures on how to visit. So you can find to visit someone, like I come to visit you, that means someone has to get the, uh, the invitation letter and come to visit. But also there is also to visit, you can decide to visit without visiting anybody. You are coming as a tourist, so you don't need the, uh, the permit, whatever, the invitation letter. But no matter what, some people usually they blame someone like me or you. Oh, just send me the invitation, I'll get the visa. Invitation doesn't give you the visa. Invitation is just a friendly letter. Oh, I just invite you to come to eat dinner with me on Christmas. Has no value at all. In the end, what is important is for you to prove at the consular officer because that is called non-immigrant visa you are going as a student you are going as a tourist prove to them that i'm going to as a tourist for one month after the activity i'm going there i'll come back to my home country show what kind of assets what income do you have so in the end it's all about you who wants to come to america to convince this guy that i want to come to my home country and not just by promising that i'm very much patriotic i love the country more than bobby wine no proof by showing the attraction of items like i have this organization i have these assets yes you can be married yes you can have farm but after so many things which can be able to tie you to the land of africa or to your country that oh this guy will, will just come back obviously so those are some of the things like to give so invitation letter is just meaningless you can just go to apply on your own even without invitation, as long as you prove you can come back and you are going for vacation for honeymoon, there is no problem. So it's all about you. But if you come for invitation, you are not allowed to work. People have to know that. So you don't come here, you, come, you are allowed to work. Student is allowed to work for 20 hours, international student. If you come as a tourist, you cannot be able to work at all. I mean, in, in tourists, you are not allowed to work. Even for me, if I go to Uganda, I'm not allowed to work as a tourist. So that people have to understand. So oh, I'll just come there and from there I'll just work and I'll work for a few days. Then no, you cannot work for a few days. Who will hire you? Because to hire you, you must have social security. You are allowed to work. You don't get all those kind of things. So that is another type of visa. There is another type of visa, which is called the H1 or the work visa. That is a little bit difficult. Uh, when you apply for a job, let's say on company A, Apple, is announcing a company in Palo Alto in California. You apply as an international. Yes, in the US it's different when you're outside. If you're outside, the company must prove to the Department of Labor that this job uh, I'm going to give to a foreigner who is out of America because we don't have enough expertise in this particular area. That's why you see so many people in the field of what you call STEM and science technology, especially from India, from China. They study and they are good in those kind of subjects. They can come here. Or you can find someone can come to teach Arabic because not everybody is Arabic professional at that highest level. Or you can come with special economist at the highest level. Not every American is a professor of economics. But you cannot come, I study bachelor degree in history. And what are you going to do here? What are you going to do with a bachelor degree in sociology? So those are the things you cannot be able to be given the visa because they protect the jobs for people. Yes, you can be able to get, but it's very difficult to get the H1 visa and especially for non-technical, uh, uh, non-technical, same these causes. That is a difficult part. 
but you can there are some you can get i know disney for instance usually they have simple jobs like the 12 dollar job because you become the cultural ambassador you work at disney but they give you those jobs there are a few jobs they usually give like they have 10 dollar 15 dollar they give you one year contract you can come from your country if they want a representative for that particular so they announced some of those few jobs i know them but majority is very difficult to get directly h1 visa and the other one which is the most one we usually talk about is a green card lottery so green card lottery is a visa which is a permanent resident card or a immigrant visa that means you play is a lottery once you win if you win is a lottery you come here in america from day one as a permanent resident and the permanent resident means you can be able to come in america at any time go out and come back without asking for the visa you will never go to the u.s embassy again to the visa interview and if you want to become a u.s citizen after five years you can become a u.s citizen you are allowed to work to any employer exception with the federal government most of the federal government jobs you must be a u.s citizen but another part is uh you cannot vote few things and also you cannot be out of the country for full one year there are few restrictions but you can work from employer a you can go to work in employer b you can work in 24 hours you can work all hours they don't care but if you come as a student you're allowed to work 20 hours on campus unless other is the summer time you can work out of school and many hours if you come on work on h1 visa work visa if you work on the apple if the Apple company fires you, your visa expires on the same day. You have 60 days to pack your things and go back to your home country. Or you have to move to wow. another company. So all other yeah, visa types, they have certain kind of restriction. So if I advise people, number one, apply for the visa. I mean, apply for the green card lottery. But don't start planning your life on the lottery. It's a lottery. That's number one. Number two, if you have a degree or you are in school, study hard, get a degree with good results. Prepare for going with education. If you come with education, you have more option to learn the country, the culture, and get work experience and transform. The other way, it is very difficult, but it happens. Some people, they can go on online dating, meet someone, they start online dating, a person come to visit you down the road, you get married. Still, excuse me, still others ways is not just something I wake up is New Year's resolution like in January and in March I come to America. It's at least one to three years process between the things you have to prepare for that. So it's not something you just wake up with during the day and these are the opportunities come to you. <laughs> That's right. So those is just like and, a uh, way, kind of like it. Okay. I have had a few friends that have applied for a tourist visa and they were denied. So um, could you briefly uh, just advise somebody that is trying to get a tourist visa, um, a young person that has no experience in work, that has is not married. Uh, what are those tips that you can give somebody? Because I know a few people that were denied, the few people that I know are that are close to me, but it's good to always hear from the other side, from the other person that, you know, is not really close to you. Yes. Yes, that is a very good thing. There are so many people, especially when you are young, I'm talking young, less than 30 most of the time, to get a US visa or even European visa. And before I, before I go, first of all, why you are denied, I want to point out something, the US visa in particular, different from Europe. Both in US and Europe, is difficult to get i understand that but in us is more complicated why because there is one aspect people have to understand in europe there is a law a police officer is allowed or immigration officer to stop you at the at the bus stop bus station train station knock your door or meet you wherever you are walking and ask you show me your passport show me your document Police officer is allowed by law in Europe, most of the European countries to do that. So they can give you the visa, but are you going to hide inside the house all the time? Because if you go out anytime, they can they allow you to do that. In the US, it is illegal for police officer to stop me and ask, show me your identification and the immigration status. What criteria did you use to stop me and not this other guy? 
because I'm black or because I look Spanish, because I look whatever. So that's why it's called as a basis of discrimination. So constitutional is not allowed. Arizona wanted to pass that law and they were told it, it, it was overturned because it is illegal because there are people who look like Spanish from Southern America or Latin I mean from Mexico, but they're born here. You cannot stop yeah. someone because they look like a Mexican. You cannot stop, stop someone because this person look like a black or this person has accent. You cannot do that. So in the US, so you can be here. And if you don't commit any crime, you're going to be for 10 years, no one can be able to catch you. So number one thing, the consular office, they have to do, they have to be sure. Yes, it is not a guarantee, but they have to find a way to you convince them, to prove to them that I have so much here. If I go to Euro US, I cannot just stay there and work at McDonald's. I will come back to do, I have so many other things on my home country. So the number one reason, which is written in the website, when, they, when you go to the US Embassy, that you are going to be denied the visa because you have failed to, conv to convince the consular officer that you are not going there on the permanent basis. You are not going there to USC and you're going to disappear. That is the number one failure. So, yes, there are documents you need to have. There are things you need to have. There are things are not tangible even if you don't have money. Let's say, for instance, for my case, oh, let me give the example of Wodemaya. Is a very big YouTuber. Even if he doesn't have enough money, but for what Wodemaya is doing on the internet, he has so much content to work in Africa than in America. So Odemaya will not be convinced to live in America. So they know for sure this guy cannot survive in America to do his content because his style is in Africa. So even if he doesn't, let's say he doesn't have the house, he doesn't have a lot of money, he has, but assume he doesn't have. So there are certain things. How much are you tied to your community? So, number one, how much do you, like, even do you even volunteer? Do you work? Or if you're a student, what level? You cannot just go there, you just graduated the bachelor degree, uh, you, you don't have a job for two years, and you have never done any single work, even volunteering. So, it is easy for you to come here and disappear. So, if you want to come to America or to go to Europe, start to build your profile. How do you build your profile? Very simple. Number one, start attaching yourself to community service, community programs. Yes, you have a job. You can be a teacher, but what is your salary? 500 US dollar per month. What is the income of someone working at McDonald's? 2000 per month. So obviously you'll disappear. So, but show that even if I'm a teacher, I don't get enough money. I, I have so many other projects in my rural area of, 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 of northern part of, of, camp, of, of, of northern part of Uganda or in the rural part of Mbea in Tanzania in such a way, if I go and disappear there, I lose the dreams of these kids which I promised. So there are things you, should, you, you, should, you need to show you have been attached to your community. It's some, certain things is not about money. That's why if you are older, someone is 50, they can give you the visa, you are 60. They know for sure you cannot survive in America. They know that compared to someone who is younger. So yes. someone is younger, you can quit so many things, but to find other things can convince them. Yes, you have a job, it's not a good pay, but also I, I just go uh, to volunteer every single week or like every twice per month, I have a project with this orphanage center. So I cannot quit on these kids. Mm -hmm. US embassy, they will see mm -hmm. this person has something of value in the country. Yes. Yeah. Right. And other things uh, like in, in a normal way, just start even buying a land, even if it's not much value. Don't wait until like you, oh, I have a very big job. Start buying some small asset under your name. You can buy a land in a rural area. $200, $500, $1,000. But if you, smaller things, they mean a lot. Because in the end, how long have you been process, or, or processing this piece of land for five years? You know that you have something to be able to do. Again, some other things are like this one. Uh, start finding a way to start your own company, even if it doesn't pay a lot or don't get a profit. Let's say you are a teacher. And let's say you are teaching maybe Swahili for foreigners in Tanzania. You are doing freelance, you are doing interpreter, whatever. Go and register as a small company, as a freelance, you are just doing as a, uh, a sole proprietor company. That means, yes, you will be registered in the government. So despite from doing this, I have another company. 
is that is just simple because the task ta uh, to pay taxes will be very small amount because you might not have the you might not even have someone just assume for instance for me i have youtube so if i register like i have a small consulting company as llc to consult international students and if immigration people to start their life in america i can show up something like okay i have something as a document to help some other people even if i don't have any customer now for instance for me i can say i'm i'm a book author i'm a writer i have books published even if no one buy buying them but the books are on amazon so these are the things we can be able to do write a book no one buying but it's on amazon that is giving you another credibility when you go to the u.s embassy or to go to any person oh so you are that, that author you have never sold any book so those are some of the tips on how you can prepare your just your profile so you can just have one year two years to go a little bit higher for me i've been like i remember one time uh, before i became american citizen i had uh, a situation where i needed to have a letter from the um, u.s um, tanzanian embassy in dc is if i come from the ambassador or one of the official on certain thing i had to submit to the government i had so i wrote an email whatever i didn't get that correspondence quicker so i asked a friend of mine and they had a cell phone number of ambassador back in it was 2010 2011. so i emailed the face i said i want to talk to you i said don't worry i know you you are that blogger you are youtuber you have done a lot of good things for tanzanians and other people so if you don't even call me i ordered it blah 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 and it was approved i got the letter next day so there are certain things you can be able to get not just monetary but it can help you to give you credibility when you go somewhere myself now i can if i go to uganda and i want to mean to meet a minister of education if i send the letter i want to have an appointment with you the minister will, will, will consider to meet me because among other things will go to google me and find oh this person has been doing certain good things so even if i don't get money there are certain things you can use as credibility when you shop somewhere someone will be able to give a just like a credit okay i can listen to this person this person will go to america will get more technique there and help the country here in africa Mm, that's right. And um, another thing, another mistake that many of us do is you have a US partner, you've been dating for quite a while, and instead of uh, trying to legalize your relationship and come on a fiancé visa or a spouse visa, people want it quicker. So they will go and apply for a visitor's visa, then they'll get denied. That is a red flag. It is not good for you to get denied several times you don't know what they're going to ask you for if you apply again so i would advise somebody out there if you're dating you're dating online like mr makurido said or you have a spouse that is an american citizen or european wherever they are as long as they're out of the, your country so it is always better to to go through the normal procedure instead of coming here as a visitor then you get married from here and you know it, things may not go as you plan because yeah. usually if you come on a visitor's visa and then you already have a partner here but you already lied that you don't have a partner you are just going to visit and then you get married they may not actually legalize your marriage they may not give you the green card so you don't want to risk that so you just go step by step take your time and come on a proper visa, visa type. yeah that would be my tip and and another one would be it is good if you travel within a few countries personally exactly. I would say if, for example, you're in Uganda, you can travel to Kenya if you can afford, for example, if you're in Rotary, you've joined the Rotary International, that is another good thing. When you join Rotary, you become very important all of a sudden because it is an international organization. Everyone knows Rotary. So you join Rotary, look about those funds, the charity organizations they do, try to be a part of the community like you said. And through Rotary you can always find so many opportunities to travel to America, to travel to Europe, to travel all over the world. And they always give you a discount. If you're a Rotarian, through your clubs 
you can usually go through your president and you get a discount for whichever country you're traveling to. And who knows, you make friends wherever you travel and they could invite you and you could be, you know, lucky and be able to live in that particular country. I think usually that is it. Travel around, show the proof that you've traveled to a country and returned to your home country so that when you show your passport to this immig immigration officer that is interviewing you, they look at your passport and you have a history that you have traveled around different countries and you have come back. So because of that, they give you credit, like you said. So they say, oh, so you've been to Kenya and you came back. What did you do in Kenya? Oh, we, were, we went for Rotary. I was actually doing to plant a tree. Oh, that is good. And you, I see that you went to Tanzania. What did you do in Tanzania? I went to visit the Masa, the, um, I forget the national park. I went yeah, to the Serengeti, national park. I whatever, went to yeah. Serengeti. I went to Serengeti. So then that way they will know that you have actually visited different countries and returned to your own country. Andy. Another thing you can show yeah. is work. If you're working, they ask you for state, you print out the statements, uh, your, your monthly statements, and you prove to them that I work for this organization and this is my pay slip. And so that way they know you're attached to your job you are attached to your other community services, you are attached to your home. If you're married, you have family, you have kids, that is another way. That usually the tourist visa is really technical. It is tough to get. I wouldn't advise people to go for a tourist visa. Start with another visa and that you can. The tourist, the, if you are a student about... and you can afford, try that. Tourist visa, usually they want, as long as you have you show proof that you are you have been working for a while you're able to sustain yourself there's no way i can wake up like you know from campus you're 19. Yeah. you're applying for a tourist visa and you have no <laughs> it doesn't you have not been working you have you have no children you are not married you have no property you have nothing to show that you will come back so those are the types that you should avoid yes and on that part you talk about uh, traveling first of all another part because you say i'm going to visit in the us and your passport maybe you are usually most of the passport are 10 years passport and for since you got your passport there is no any stamp for five six years and you say i'm going to to travel so what have you been waiting all these six years so they know this <laughs> is travel to America is goodbye. So, <laughs> so yeah, like, you may not come back. <laughs> because, yeah, the way I say I, I've been traveling to other countries is belief that oh, this person is adventurous. Yeah, he's going to travel. Yes, he wants to check something. But you have never visited anywhere, and from nowhere you wake up in the morning. I'm going to visit America. What are you going to look? Just eat your matoke, eat your garden, and sleep here. They give you the visa. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> that is right and guys if you haven't subscribed go ahead and subscribe like the video i know i didn't say that at the beginning but i trust you guys that you will support us to give you the knowledge that we have share our experiences and make us all aware of the situation that is around the world um so this is we, we're going to continue on this and uh I would, so One what is uh, you... what are some of the tips yeah. that you can give to somebody i was adding one thing okay getting okay. a visa is not your right it is a privilege so you cannot appeal when they deny the visa because some people say i have all the documents but you said the bank statement <laughs> of is your uncle but we want you to prove to us so when they deny the visa is just you if you want again you go to reapply but you cannot go to the court you cannot go with your attorney to go to do that so that's why make sure that you have the documents and don't go today they deny you go tomorrow they deny you go like five times in a row they mark you are past whatever whatever you go there why this person all this time like in three months has come five times this person has bad <laughs> intention maybe this guy is going to be a terrorist why yes. are you so i mean obsessed yes <laughs> yeah and so what are some of the tips that you can give somebody who is e who is coming to you in your inbox asking you how can i come to america how can i come there yeah 
the number one thing they have to trust the answer you are giving because there are some people assume that because you are in america you don't want someone else to come so whatever you give the answer say oh you are complicating the ways because you know i cannot follow this one but this is the procedure you see that's the problem people they want them to be lied so for instance you will tell people come they say okay this is the procedure so there is one agent said you can just get the work visa and just come I say, ask that agent, why can't he come to work here in America? Just ask him, <laughs> do you want, like, I understand, yes, but these are the steps. And I can just add yeah. one thing. Uh, there is this other type of visa. Uh, there are people who want, usually they ask about the being a nanny, uh, work from someone's home. They all, I'll just come and work to your house. I'll, I don't want to take a lot of money. I want to explain a little bit about the process of bring a foreigner is a nanny in America. People need to understand that way. There is a law in Western world, which was because of the slave trade and slavery. So to er eradicate all the forms of slavery, slave trade and all other ways. So there is something called modern day slavery. So the Western countries, they ban any way to practice the modern, modern day slavery. So if we bring a nanny, they know that is one of the way of modern day slavery practices. So the way we use it to assume the nannies in our countries, you can bring someone, oh, you're in America, take 300, 200 per month. That is against the, the, the law. So there is a contract. If I want to bring someone as a nanny, there is a contract from the Department of Labor and in order to get someone to get the visa, the person must be paid above the, not below the minimum wage of the particular state so someone has yes. to work eight yes. hours for instance you are state yes. is ten dollar per hour so ten dollar per hour times 40 hours per week so 160 uh per month so if someone is your state is like ten dollar per hour is a minimum wage so you must pay someone a hundred one thousand and six hundred us dollar it doesn't matter whether that is the amount you're supposed to pay that's number one Second, the person is only supposed to work more than eight hours because 40 hours per week is overtime. The person has to have a job description. Like if yeah. it's going to help with a child and this and this, if you give something else out of the, the person has no has a right, then you must give the place to stay. And that is not going to be taken from the salary. You have to give the insurance. It's not taken from the salary. So those are the template of the bringing someone as a nanny. And if you bring someone and yeah. do the job because you are not paying from the federal government, paying the tax and you don't pay anything, you are going to be said you are doing, first of all, you do the money laundering and also you are doing the modern day slavery. It has happened in two, mm -hmm. I can give two, simple, two cases. There is one case, there is one Tanzanian who was working, I think, from the US, uh, US Tanzanian embassy in DC, brought someone in a situation like that way. The person went to the court, to the lawyers, the lawyers went to the court. The person was charged with the modern day slavery. If you go to the Google search and search, the person was penalized. Five million US dollar fine, plus the person was given wow. citizenship because that was modern day slavery. And the country, I believe the government wow. had to pay because if you don't pay, the country will be denied all the, uh, the, the, contracts you have the country because the country will be practicing modern day slavery there is another tanzanian of indian origin was working in england as a doctor brought a nanny or housemaid from tanzania and took the person to make chapati make everything like in africa and didn't pay what was supposed to be paid for the person was taken to jail for three years and i don't know how many hundred thousand whatever uh pound is fine so myself, for instance, I cannot bring wow. any person as a nanny from Africa. Yes, I can find a way to invite if my relative. If you come here, you can help me as a relative. You come as a visiting. But if I want to bring someone as employee, like to work from my house, because then I have to claim on the, ta on the tax return that I'm employing someone to help with my to get ta tax, tax credit and all other things. So I have to do everything as illegal, because if I don't do, I go to the prison. So there are things people yeah, have to understand, you, like it's not just everything is to bypass. Oh, I'll just say at, at your house, I'll work, don't worry. But what if you go comfortable with that person and decide to go to the to the immigration or to go to whatever? 
it comes back to you. Yes. Someone will get me and you. Do you know? And you that that person that is requesting you and begging you in that inbox, they will turn against you. They will come here. They will read about what they're supposed to be paid. And you know, money is the root of all evil. Yes. They will turn against you in one minute and yeah. they will go to the immigration. And and but also since everything here is very simple, it is not like in Africa where you're going to hand wash your clothes, hand wash your everything, hand wash, hand wash the utensils. I feel like um, even if I brought you brought a nanny, there is not much she or he is going to do. Exactly. So why should you want to hire somebody to just do something you can do yourself? Everything here is so. Um, you have so many machines to help you around the house. It's not that you're going to be cleaning the house every day or doing what you just yeah. plan. <laughs> so people <laughs> that you know ask me in my inbox, how do you how do you manage to work? You have a child, you have to cook, you have to clean. Oh my god, you yeah. must be going crazy. You must be going crazy. And in my mind, I say no. It depends on the attitude you have. There's nothing like going crazy. I plan my time. I wake up, prepare my daughter, put her, give her the toys, give her a snack, sit on my computer, start working, move around, drink water. It is not so difficult. It depends on the and mindset it, it, also. It's different because like in, I mean, most of the people, there are certain things we use by culture. Like I'm giving an example. Let's say in Tanzania, Uganda, whatever, Uganda, Kenya, like someone is waking up is washing dishes, uh, then is going to make breakfast to eat breakfast, and then is cooking, let's say, uh, ugali and maybe beans for lunch. And then for dinner, uh, after eating lunch, two hours later, is starting cooking dinner, maybe a matoke and meat. But why, while you are working lunch, why can't you cook like here and here? You finish everything and you don't cook in the evening, you just rest. But I don't know some people they like, I have to be I have to be busy. No, finish and do other things. Like <laughs> even if you say okay, I don't want to put these things in the fridge for two days. While I'm cooking my lunch, I can cook rice here, I can cook bananas mm -hmm. here. Then mm -hmm. I finish, I finish at at at, at noon or one. I don't cook until tomorrow. In the evening, yeah. I put it from hot pot. And in Africa, we have good technology. Like hot pot, put it there, mm -hmm. just take it there, just eat. That's true, but yeah. also maybe because sometimes the electricity is not very reliable. You you cannot trust the refrigerator that it is good. The food will stay you uh, by, very by fresh. So While sometimes you are, lunch, you are cooking the lunch. You cook also for dinner at the same time. Like mm -hmm. yes, I want to cook different food. Oh, that's yeah, you, you cook dinner, lunch, and dinner together. Like one here, another pot here. You finish. That means you don't need to start like using the charcoal again. Whatever. So in the evening, what you do is just like heat it up. People in, people in <laughs> Africa don't like to eat leftovers. They call it leftovers. They don't <laughs> like to eat that. Anyway, let's wrap up. <laughs> I've had a very good <laughs> conversation. Uh, so we shall do another one similar to this one so if you have liked this conversation you have liked the knowledge we are sharing go ahead and leave us a comment down below let us know what you'd like us to share with you guys uh we then we shall upload another video also subscribe watch the video to the end i mean support us that's what keeps us moving so yes uh thank you very much today for giving us that knowledge and encouraging all of us um we will we'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys. Bye-bye, everyone.